Today we're going to check out a mechanical keyboard that's specifically made for mobile devices and it's also a pretty affordable option. I've seen this on Masterop before but I haven't seen much of it since and this was provided by lightinthebox.com so a big thanks to them. This keyboard is from Bastron who actually make glass keyboards as well but this is their mechanical keyboard, the Bastron MK75. Opening up the box we have the keyboard itself. We also get a small Phillips head screwdriver a Bluetooth dongle, and a user manual. However, they do have a way better in-depth one on their website, which I'll link. Okay, so here it is, and it's a pretty straightforward design that they've gone with. We basically have our keyboard and then a channel to place our mobile devices on. The channel is pretty wide at about 11.5 millimeters on the bottom and 16 millimeters for the top opening, so it should fit most tablet devices. The angle of your device will depend on how thick it is, the slimmer the device is, the more laid back it will be, and the thicker it is, the more upright it will be. The build is an all plastic construction, but after you chuck in the 4 AA batteries, it does pack some weight at about 770 grams, and this will only get heavier with the device or devices on there. Without the metal, there is some flex to it, but overall it doesn't necessarily come off as cheap feeling. They've gone with a 75 key layout, so we basically have a standard 60% keyboard, with a function row chucked on top. And this makes absolute sense in terms of size as it will span the length of the larger tablets. The tablet I have here is the Sony Xperia Z 10 inch tablet, which is about 26.5 centimeters wide and it still has some room on the sides. Although what we can do is rotate it and we can put our phone next to it if we want to or even another smaller tablet. Because this is basically a 60% board, I think the main problem for this for normal users will be the lack of dedicated arrow keys. I've used 60% keyboards in the past, so I am accustomed to using keys on a function layer, but for a casual user it is pretty annoying. I mean I still prefer dedicated arrow keys on my keyboards because of the way I like to work. The font on the keycaps is the Gamery font. Now this is a keyboard that isn't marketed towards gamers so I'm completely justified in saying that this is a terrible typeface. It would look so much better to have a simpler font to make it cleaner looking and more professional. Fortunately this has a completely standard ANSI layout so you could change the keycaps if you wanted to. I think the overall design is pretty clean. The design is based on function so it's quite square. It has a floating key design so the switches are exposed from the sides and the base under the keycaps is actually quite slim. Like if we cut off the rest of it, this would be one of the thinner keyboards out there. This is all black, but there's also a gray version of it, which I personally think does look a bit nicer. Above the arrow keys, we have our Bluetooth channel buttons labeled one, two, and three that I'll go through later. And we have another pairing button and the backlighting button. The backlighting doesn't have any brightness levels or effects. So it's just on and off, which is fine but it's very dim that it's hardly even visible in a decently lit environment, but it will still be useful in very dark conditions. But I guess the reason they did this was to conserve power consumption and extend that battery life, which personally is a good trade-off. And behind the channel we have the quite bulky back section which also houses the batteries. It's nice that they provide a screwdriver to open the battery door, and for some reason there is no spot for the Bluetooth dongle to be stored. This requires 4 AA batteries which are not included and this can't be used without any batteries because there is no option for a physical connection and can only be used via Bluetooth. I've been using this on and off for maybe about a month or so primarily with my tablets and it's still running so I actually haven't depleted the batteries yet so I'm not really sure how long they will go and I guess it's also dependent on the batteries you have so really so far so good in terms of battery life. One of the biggest features they're pushing is that this keyboard can simultaneously be used on three devices. We have the three buttons here, and these are the three different channels we can store a device on. To pair a device to a channel, just hold down the button for three seconds, and then it will start rapidly blinking. And then you just go to your Bluetooth settings on your device and connect it. And we can do the same with the other two channels. So now that we have three devices connected, to swap between them, we just press the channel number and use the corresponding device. It's worked on every device I've tried so far. I've tried it on Windows, Android, Mac OS and iOS and they've all worked seamlessly together. It's also really nice that they gave some attention to the Apple users with the command and option keys on there. 
There's also software that you can download from their website allowing you to pair it up with your PC with the Bluetooth dongle. The experience is pretty smooth but there is that bit of latency which is noticeable but for mobile device use which mainly consists of typing rather than gaming for me at least, it's absolutely fine. But yeah, you won't want to be using this for gaming because you will feel that delay. The button next to the LED button is for syncing it with their own mouse, which you can also get this bundled with, and this allows you to use the mouse to switch between the channels as well. Also on the back there are a couple of small rubber feet, but unfortunately the flip up feet aren't rubber tipped, which should be standard at this point. Now to the switches, these come in a standard version which are these clicky blue switches, and a quiet one which I assume are maybe browns or something. These say Kai Hong on the housing, no idea where that's from, but it's just a Chinese clone of the Cherry MX Blue Switch, so it's loud, tactile, and clicky with a medium weight. To me, they feel very similar to Altamu Blues, so really, they're just like Altamu's. And here's a quick sound test. It's dependent on what environments you will use this keyboard in, but as an overall package, loud clicky switches doesn't really make sense as it makes the keyboard less versatile. This is specifically made for mobile devices, which means that it would be very useful to bring around with you to use with your devices, but this is definitely too loud for many scenarios that aren't at home, like at a workplace or at school. Of course there are variables, but for the most part it is too loud, making it pretty much only usable at home or secluded areas. Alternatively, if we have a quieter switch, it makes the device more versatile and portable in a sense, so definitely overall the quiet version makes more sense. To take the keyboard apart, there's 9 Phillips head screws on the top side, and 6 on the bottom side with 1 under the battery door, and 2 under the top feet. And this is indeed an all plastic construction, so there is no metal plate, instead we just have a plastic plate. There is flex outside of the case, which doesn't happen with the usual steel. While the bottom shell is thin, it still has flex, but it's surprisingly solid enough with just a touch of ribbing on the bottom surface for reinforcement. We have our header with the leads that go to the battery compartment, and the connection is pretty solid, so it should be fine. The PCB is clean and the soldering job is top notch. The SMD LEDs are on the other side of the PCB, so there's hardly anything going on back here. So overall, it's a very functional mechanical keyboard for mobile devices and does what it sets out to do. I think the only difficulty in using this for some people will be not having the dedicated arrow keys in which other competing keyboards achieve with their more true 75% layout. The typeface on the keycaps could be better and I feel like it would have gave the keyboard a much more presentable look if it did have a cleaner font. Perhaps the lighting could have been a bit brighter, but it isn't a problem for me personally, and it does conserve the battery life. The key switches are unknown to me, but I mean, they're just another Chinese clone and pretty much just feel like Atomu Blues, so they feel pretty good, but I can't make any comments on the longevity of them. This is available in the quieter switches, and to me that makes more sense, as it does allow you to use it in more environments. The overall design is simple, and functional and looks pretty good in my opinion, especially if you chuck on different keycaps. I like the Apple compatibility with the command and option keys and its ability to be used with multiple devices. The build is absolutely nothing special, there is no metal, which does make the keyboard lighter, but of course it doesn't feel high quality, but at the same time it's not necessarily cheap. Thanks to lightinthebox.com for providing this keyboard for review, and I'll leave links in the description.